All right, hey guys, sorry again about um, class yesterday. Just was not feeling well and not up for lecturing. Uh, I feel a little better today, so I am recording you a video on 4.1, which is what we would have discussed um, on Thursday after the quiz and stuff. Uh, but I wanted, I'm not going to, there's one part of 4.1 that's just going to be easier if I am there, because we're going to look at a bunch of different graphs. Um, so I think I'll do everything except that part, which is called the end behavior of polynomials. And uh, then we'll just kind of finish that up. It shouldn't take us too long. At the beginning of class on Tuesday, then we'll um, talk about 4.5 on Tuesday, kind of finish that up on Tuesday. And then Thursday, of course, you don't have to come on Thursday. It's totally optional. Um, but I'll have the review for you also. It's also posted on Blackboard now. But Thursday will just be a day to kind of talk about the review, talk about the final, um, and I can answer any questions you have. So let's talk about 4.1. So we're going back to Chapter 4. And, and the reason I don't go in order, uh, why we didn't do four before five, is because five chapter five with logarithms is just too important. And so uh, I just want to always make sure we get through that first. And then we don't need this stuff in chapter four really to talk about chapter five. So I always come back to chapter four at the end. And so we'll only get through about two sections in chapter four, but that's fine. Um, so what we're going to look at are polynomial functions and models. So let's first start with a definition. All right, so the definition, a polynomial function is of the form. So here is the form for a polynomial function. A polynomial function in x, they don't always have to be in x, but let's say, um, I, I don't know how big I want this polynomial to be. So remember, a polynomial is basically just a bunch of terms added or subtracted together that have exponents that are whole numbers, meaning no fractions, no negatives, okay? Um, and coefficients are real. So we use this notation um, with a subscript. So I'm going to call the first term a sub n. So that n is just going to correspond to, this is the coefficient for the term that has x to the nth power. Plus, and if I write this in descending order, meaning my biggest term first, let's say that n is my biggest term, then the next term would be one less than that, right? And you don't have to have every single term, right? Some of these a's could be zeros. So, you know, if I have a, um, let's see, I'll do a little bit of writing down here. If I have x to the fifth, I don't have to have an x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared term. You know, I could have x to the fifth plus x plus one. So in this case, n would be five, a sub n would be 1, and then, you know, a sub n minus 1, which is usually x to the 4th, the a, the, the, or excuse me, the next term, which would be x to the 4th, that coefficient would just be 0. And, you know, my next term I would have subtract 1 from that until we get down. So then plus, then we have a bunch of terms. I don't, when I use the n, I don't actually know how many terms I have. So I need to make sure I just put a dot, 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 because I don't know if I have five terms or four terms or 37 terms. So that dot, dot, dot in mathematics is pretty wonderful because I can say, eh, continue this pattern until we get down to maybe, you know, if you have an x squared term, a sub 1x. And then, of course, we can have a constant term like this one right here. We call that a sub 0. Technically, that's a sub 0 times x to the 0, but what is x to the 0? Well, anything to the 0 power is 1. So this is the a polynomial function is of this form. You don't really need to know this form. I just wanted to kind of get you used to seeing a form. And like a, this is a very mathematical definition. I don't know if it's possible to be more mathematical or less mathematical. Um, sorry if you hear that outside noise. There's like people doing stuff outside my office. I'm not sure what they're doing. Uh, OK, so a polynomial function is of this form where the coefficients, so what are the coefficients? The coefficients are those numbers in front of the x term. So the coefficients a sub n, a sub n minus 1, dot, 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 all the way until the last couple. These must be real numbers, are real numbers. So I don't want to, we can talk about polynomials with coefficients that are in the non-reals, but not in this class. Okay, where those are real numbers and the exponents, the exponents are whole numbers. Okay. What's a whole number? A whole number is um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? That is what we call a whole number. So 
We'll get rid of this really quick. Um, some things I just want to, let's classify, well, a couple things here. So let's talk about some stuff that um, is kind of important when we're talking about maybe classifying polynomials. So a couple of terms, the degree of the polynomial, okay, it is just the degree is the largest exponent. We've talked about this before. Exponent of the polynomial, okay. Oh, sorry about that. There's lots of food in the student learning office if you would like to go. <laughs> Let me close my um, email. Okay, so uh, degree, the largest, the degree is just the largest exponent of the polynomial. We've talked about that before. A couple other things. We talk, we can talk about the leading term. So the leading term is if you put this guy in descending order, meaning you put the largest term, the term of the largest exponent first, it's that term. So this is the term. We'll do a couple examples with this. The term with the largest exponent. Now, again, not all of these are going to be written in descending order, so you need to make sure you pay a careful attention to that. The leading term isn't always the first term. It's the term with the largest exponent. And then we have something called the leading coefficient. I spelled that wrong. I say it. Coef, I think that's how you spell it. Ah, who cares, right? Leading coefficient is just the coefficient of the leading term. Okay. All right, so let's, um, I want to do a couple examples here, but before we do actually do examples with degree, leading term, and leading coefficient, what I'd like to do is talk about how we classify polynomials. So, Let's do that, and then we'll just do a bunch of examples. Classifying polynomials. So types of poly... Oh, whoa, 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 Sarah. I'm going to use the good old trick of making a line. So a um, couple poly classifying polynomials. The first type of polynomial we'll talk about, which we've done before, is a linear polynomial, okay? This has degree one. And an example would be something like um, one-third x plus four. Of course, why do we call it linear? Because if we were to plot the points that satisfy, like an equation y equals one-third x plus four, then we would get a line. We know that. What about a degree two? We know what this is. I'm gonna. I'm just pretending you guys are talking to me. It's great. A degree two um, is what we call quadratic, right? So an example of a quadratic, maybe a negative four thirds. I don't know why I'm doing thirds here. X squared minus X. Let's just say we do that. We don't have to have a constant term. We don't have to have an X term. For it to be a quadratic, we just must have the X squared term. Uh, degree three, we call a cubic. Okay, an example of a cubic maybe is, um, I don't know, a negative x plus the square root of 5x cubed. I wanted to do that because I want to point out that your coefficients just have to be real. They don't have to be rational. They can be irrational, but they do have to be real. And then the last one, so linear, quadratic, cubic, and then a degree 4, this is the last one we do, is called a quartic. Yeah, and that's any degree four polynomial. So for example, three x to the fourth, let's say, I don't know, minus three x cubed plus seven x squared. So we can have all the terms minus pi. Ooh, that's a constant, right? Good times. All right, so there's um, some examples that's classifying. Um, I think a degree five polynomial is like Quintic or quintic or something, and then I'm not sure after that what they call them. We just call them degree, you know, a polynomial of degree six or degree four. Or whatever. So, um, let's do an example here. Find the degree leading term and leading co leading to coefficient. Well, let's just do it in leading coefficient. I'm not going to worry about classifying too much. I'm going to be lazy here too. I'm going to call leading coefficient LC. 
so of the following polynomials. So how about this one, negative 0.4x to the fifth plus 2x squared minus x. Okay, so the degree of this polynomial is the largest exponent, so that's pretty clear to see that that is 5. The leading term, or the LT, if you want to be like the cool kids, um, is this term that contains the, the, highest, the highest degree. So that would be a negative 0.4x to the fifth. Okay, and then what is the leading coefficient? It's just the coefficient of that term, so negative 0.4. So pretty easy, right? I hope it's not too bad. Um, what about something like this? How about um, x to the sixth plus one seventh x to the ninth minus three fifths x to the eleventh plus four x minus x to the fifth. Why not? Let's get a little crazy. X to the sixth plus one seventh x to the ninth minus three fifths x to the eleventh plus four x minus x to the fifth. So this is not in descending order if you notice. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to find my term with the largest exponent. And this guy is my winner. So this guy is going to help us determine everything. So degree, what's the exponent there? Largest exponent would be 11. Leading term then would be a negative 3 fifths x to the 11th. And what is the leading coefficient? It's just a negative 3 fifths. So I hope that makes sense. This should be, this should be pretty easy. It's not, it's not too difficult. Um, yeah, it's not too difficult. The last thing I want to talk about, and then this is going to be a pretty short video, because um, again, I want to, and, and that's good, because I imagine your attention span. I'm just going through my notes and getting my notes. Um, you know, for like a math video, probably isn't the same as for like a movie or something. <laughs> so, um, so let's do one more example in this. So we are going to, on Tuesday, we'll talk about this idea, idea of end behavior of a function. And I encourage you to read your book in 4.1 if you just want to get online and look up the e-text about the end behavior. It won't take us too long to develop the idea of end behavior. Um, you know, this section goes to 4.2 where um, we talk about graphing graphing without a calculator, which we're not, we're not going to do. We just don't have time to do it. And I want you to see a little bit of rational functions, which is what we're going to talk about um, on Tuesday after we finish up 4.1. So my last example here that I want to do um, is a polynomial model. So a polynomial, mathematical models, not only are they people who are pretty and good at math, <laughs> I know, that's not very funny. Um, <laughs> Uh, mathematical model is something that describes, you know, finding an equation or something in mathematics used to describe a real world phenomenon or something, something in the real world. So my example here, and these are going to be pretty easy. Most of these, like on your homework and stuff like that, you're just plugging numbers in. So um, let me write this down. So the polynomial function okay, and we'll call this We'll give it by m, and we'll, this is m of t, okay? So it doesn't always have to be x, as you can see. 0 0.5 t to the fourth, okay, plus 3.45 t cubed minus 96.65 t squared plus 347.7 t. Okay, so this is a mathematical model that is going to, um, what this does for us is it estimates, it's not perfect, math is perfect but the real world isn't, estimates the milligrams of ibuprofen, I always say that wrong, the milligrams of Advil, <laughs> ibu, it sounded out Sarah, profren, ibuprofen in the bloodstream. T hours after a dose of 400 milligrams, okay? 
So you're given a dose of 400 milligrams, and then, um, you know, the way they probably came up with this model, they found some poor sucker who would agree to have his or her blood drawn every hour, and they tested the number of milligrams in it, and then they plot those points, and then they find a polynomial function that fits those points, okay? Okay, so let's estimate the amount of ibuprofen in the bloodstream um, let's do one hour, two hours, four hours, and six hours after the initial dose. Okay, so again, what does this function do? So again, half the battle is understanding, you know, what a function actually does. And so um, when I plug, when I look at this function, what does this give you? You plug in time, you plug in hours after that initial dose, and it spits out the number of milligrams of ibuprofen. So if I want to know the amount of ibuprofen after an hour, it's as simple as taking m of 1. And so I'm just going to plug this in. And because it's 1, I'm really just going to add the, add the coefficients together, or not add, some to some of its subtraction, but I'm just going to add or subtract the coefficients. I recommend you take out your calculator and do this along with me. So we get 255. So after an hour, there are two, about estimation, 255 milligrams of ibuprofen in your bloodstream. So this is kind of interesting. So let's see what happens after two hours. So again, I am just plugging in two for every T I get right here. So you should get out your calculator and try this along with me and see if we get the same thing. Now this doesn't mean that I'm doing it right. <laughs> and you guys aren't available to correct me because I can't talk to you. So, but we'll try it. Oh man, my computer's making very weird noises, which is a little, a little scary. Um, so, uh, I did something wrong because I got 1,200, and that would be wrong. <laughs> um, I don't know what's wrong with my computer, guys, so if this goes down, this, that might be bad. So I get 0. 0.5 times 2 to the 4, 3.45 times, oh, I did 2 to the 8th instead of 2 cubed. Okay, so we get 300. So the amount of bloodstream, amount of ibuprofen in my bloodstream, of course, is increasing because in my blood, I'm starting to absorb the ibuprofen, right? When you take that initial dose, it's not like right away you have 400 milligrams in your bloodstream. All right, let's put in four and see what happens. This actually becomes kind of interesting because eventually what's going to happen is we are going, to, eventually it's going to start going away, right? So if I put in the four, so, oh, there we go. So in four, after four hours, I only have 193.2 milligrams. And then um, if you put in six, well, I already know this, you're going to get zero milligrams. So after six hours, and I believe the dosage for ibuprofen is, you can take it every six hours. I think they say eight, but I'm pretty sure you can do six. But I am not a doctor, so don't listen to me. Um, but if you notice, this kind of makes sense, right? I would increase, increase until at some point it's going to start going away, right, from my body, and eventually I'll have zero milligrams in my bloodstream. So most of these models really is just going to involve plugging in numbers into the model and then making sure you don't make a mistake like I did in your calculator. Um, so I hope that made sense. It should be pretty straightforward. The fun sheet is up on Blackboard. The final exam review is up on Blackboard also if you want to start looking at that. And then on Tuesday, we just need to talk about um, the end behavior of these polynomial functions, and we'll do 4.5. All right, you guys, have a wonderful weekend. Bye.